So, quick question: uh, Who was at Jab? Was has seen my Jab uh, presentation from last year? Perfect, because the first part is very similar. So, as a warning. Okay, so I'm Daniele. I I have a company in Italy with my colleague Dario, which is at here at Jab. Um, we are a web agency. We do website with Joomla, 100%. We do marketing, Facebook, uh, mobile applications, and everything that's web-related. And we also are in Zoolanders, which is a company we started last, uh, actually, uh, one year and a half ago, uh, with a colleague, Milian, from Spain. Uh, and we do extensions for, for Zoo, just that. Um, we are uh, actually also contributors to Zoo Core. So sometimes we contribute to the actual zoo package when you think it's a, a hand on that. So what I will speak about today is um, an introduction on zoo, so general concepts, the, the terms, uh, w uh, which terminology zoo uses on which sections. Uh, I will do a real work case, so I'll take a website we, we did with zoo. Uh, explain the concept we, we use to build it and showcase some features both of Zoo and some of our extensions that we integrate in the website. And based on this, uh, the knowledge of the audience, so you, I'll also do some explanation how Zoo works under the hood. So how can you customize it, override it, and create your own applications and build websites very quickly, okay? So let's start. Um, Zoo has few core concepts. Uh, first, first of all, who has already used Zoo at least once? Okay. Yeah, you theme, you don't count. <laughs> okay. Um, who has used another CCK, like K2 or JC blog, Flexi content? Okay. No CCK user here? Oh, okay, so uh, Zoo is quite a bit different from K2. Uh, K2 is like an extended version of com content, so you can add things to a content page. Uh, Zoo is a more pure CCK, so you, uh, uh, it's more similar to the UCM concept, so you build uh, your content with various fields, okay? So uh, just to start, these are the basics on Zoo. There are applications, there are types, elements, layout, items, and submissions. Okay, the important ones are the first five, and submission is just a, a fr the front-end editing feature of Zoo that uses the items and the rest of the thing. So I'll go each, uh, on each one and explain how that works and wh why Zoo is so powerful because it uses this concept. So applications, uh, I usually uh, say that applications are similar to what components are for Joomla. So it's like building your own small application inside the Zoo environment. And each application can be totally different from the other, uh, given the fact that you are all, always, nearly always doing catalogs or listings or blogs. But the content of that application can be totally different from real estate, to events, to, I don't know, product catalogs, uh, blogs, pages, whatever you can think of that has a listing and, uh, and items that can be built on Zoo. So nearly everything you have on a website, uh, document manager, media manager, whatever, you can build on Zoo. So there is no limitation on that side. The fun thing is that uh, you can also have multiple uh, applications of the same time and those are called instances. So for example, you have a product catalog, you can have actually two different product catalogs based on the same app on the same website with the same code base. So for example, you have the, I don't know, the glasses catalog and the journal catalog. On the same app, you can have two different catalogs totally separated from the, each other based on the same code base. Like multi-site for Joomla, this is multi-catalog for Joomla. So uh, Zoo in the free version ships, so you think, correct me if I'm wrong on this because I don't actually remember. I have the pro version, so I, I'm going by heart. 
The core version should, be on, should have the two basic applications, which is Pages Manager and the blog application. Uh, the blog application is the standard uh, Zoo application that we can use as an example. While the uh, pro version has uh, business uh, the directory, product catalog, um, cookbook application, documentation application, some other examples of application you can build on Zoom. You can build your own apps, even if you're not a developer. You just need to know HTML, CSS, and that's it. And if you are a developer, you can do much more, but the basics, uh, you do not require any coding skills. Then you can also override in any application, so both the core ones, the pro ones, or your custom ones, you can override w nearly everything you have on Zoo is overridable. So when you build your own application or you, do a, you prepare a blog application on your website, uh, you can override any styling, any uh, behavior, any feature you have in Zoo is overridable just for that application. You can also have custom things uh, custom behaviors, custom features uh, that you can insert into your application. Each application has types. The types are content types. So it's what you uh, declare to be. So for example, uh, you need to build a product catalog application watches. You build a type watch. And you say the watch contain, yeah, has, a, I don't know, the color, the size, uh, the model or, I don't know, the stripe or whatever. Uh, and you define these fields. The listing of these fields is called type, okay? And Zoo has a very clear UI for the, in the backend to build these kind of types with a drag and drop feature that we'll see later on. And there, if you are a developer, the concept is very similar to the classes concept in a language programming uh, environment. And then there are the layouts. Okay, layouts. Each, uh, each type, so in, the, in my previous example, the watches catalog, uh, you can display a type or an item in very different ways using Zoo. Like the classic example is you have the listing of your watches or your products. And the way you see the item, and the, in this case the watch, on the teaser, so in the listing, is very different from what you see, uh, from how you see your item in its full page. So when you browse directly to that item, uh, the way that Zoom manages this application, the, the, this feature is using layout. So each, you can have multiple layouts to see the same thing based on where you are. Okay. And then we have the elements. This is, in my opinion, the greatest Zoo feature ever. Uh, these are the building blocks of the types. So each field you are going to insert uh, into a type uh, is an element. Uh, so for example, you can have a text field, a text area field, a select field, an image field, a video field. Um, you can name whichever you want. I think there are, I don't know, 20, 25 gen. I don't remember a lot of them, uh, like I, I think around 20 basic elements. And if you don't, uh, if you need something more, you can create it. Uh, both if you are a, just an integrator or if you are a developer, you can do very advanced things on this on, on with this feature. So uh, as I said, you have uh, you have the core elements which that ships with Zoo, uh, the Zoo core version has all the elements except the widget kit integration, if I remember correctly. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a widget, it's a widget kit pro. I don't remember. There is one element which that ships with the pro version, and I think it's the widget kit integration with the gallery or something like that. But the rest is all included in the free version, so you don't have limitation on on this field. So example of what you can build with Zoo. This is a website we built. Uh, as Webull, using entirely Uteam, um, Uteam's tools, so Warp 6 as a template engine, uh, Zoo as the main component on which the site is based, widget kit for uh, slideshow, image galleries, and so on, and our Zoolander tools for expanded version of, 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 Zoo, of the Zoo elements. Brief 
uh, overview, this is a wine company. It's the biggest Europe wine distributor uh, in Europe. Uh, and they commissioned us to, to build their UK website, which is a business to business um, website. So it's not to be browsed by normal users, or well, yeah, can be browsed by normal users, but their target audience is the distributor that has to buy the wine and distribute it for, I don't know, the local wine store or whatever. Uh, what they have here is a wine catalog of about 300 wines and a list of wineries which are estates in which they produce wine in Italy or, or here in California. Um, and they want to list both the wines and their relation with the wineries. So where each wine is produced and which wines each estate produce. So what we did is we built an application on Zoo uh, based on the product catalog one. Uh, which has no extra code, so it's not a developer uh, approach, it's just a design approach. And as you can see, the, um, and, uh, as you can see, uh, I will tell you that in this site, all that you can see here is Zoo, 100%. So there aren't like five different components or uh, one that manages news, the other that manages, I don't know, the awards or or the services, one for the wines, it's ev everything is zoo here, okay? So for example, uh, the, the, the central part here, uh, Wines of the Month, it's a widget kit that fetches from zoo the Wines of the Month, which like, like you mark it, uh, you put them in the Wines of the Month category and they automatically will display in that module. And as you can see, they have a very specific graphic. So there is that image put in that particular direction, in that particular size with the name under it. And if you click on the item, obviously you go to the wine page. Uh, the image you see there is automatically resized upon view. So uh, the first time you get to see this page, Zoo checks how you uh, want the image to be displayed, so the size, does our, um, a one-time resize of the image and stores it in the cache folder. So you don't have to each time upload the, the image in the correct file size. So I, I don't actually upload the file at 100 pixels. It could be like 500 pixels, 800 pixels. And Zoo automatically does the, the, the resizing for me on the fly. So even if I change the image, the, the, the file will be Resize it again once. Below that you have, no, below that, no. We have the new news and events thing, which is another Zoo application that is done for managing news uh, that the company has to tell to their distributors. But even that is done in Zoo in a separate application. So they can manage separately wines and news and events, all from the same interface. So we, the, the, the cool thing about that is, is that we just had to teach the client to use one component, Zoo. So instead of saying, okay, to manage the articles, you go to com content, so com content article manager and blah, blah, blah. If you want to manage the wines, you have to go to Zoo, blah, 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 blah. Uh, instead here we have, okay, click here and you have all the things you have on your website are in this unique interface and you just have to learn how to create and modify the items in this interface. So even here, we have an integration with Widget Kit. If I have the Wi-Fi here, I'll, I'll show the site live so you can see the animations. Uh, and it's a slideshow of various news with uh, CSS free effects. And it's mobile compa compatible, so if you go on with an iPad, you can swipe on the news and it will change based on the its touch uh, compatible, so you don't have to click on the button. You can slide with the finger, and it will work. And even here, each content is pulled from Zoo, and the image is resized dynamically. And the coolest thing on the first page is the search. Uh, we have an extension on Zoo Lenders called Zoo Filter, that allows you to search on each field you set up in Zoo. So you can uh, search on every item in the catalog based on each field that you desire. 
So if you have a custom type, you can search field by field on that type. Okay, so going on, this is the wine catalog page. Uh, the page is the same even if you, if you browse all the wines or if you search on the wines. This is the same page, so it does the filtering on this page. And <coughs> as you can see, um, there are just free information for each item, or for each wine here. The name, the image, and the little image on the top, I don't know if you can see it, it's the name, uh, it's the image of the winery that produced the wine, okay? The cool thing about this is that, uh, let me skip it, that thing over there, it's not actually just an image, and I'll explain better this concept later on, uh, but Keep in mind that that particular image is not really an image for the wine. So when I go over this, I'll explain better. And this is the full page of the wine. So this image here that you see here on the left <coughs> is exactly the same of that image. So I didn't <coughs> upload twice the image, one small and one big image. It's one image. Uh, Actually, it's bigger than this. Let me skip. I will. Blah, 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 blah. It's actually bigger than the one you see on the screen. Uh, it's actually bigger than this. It's like 1,000 pixels. Zoo does the uh, resize on the fly once, so not at every page load, but just once. And the same thing it does for the teaser image in the page before. So the client just has to upload the file once, and we can display that images in as many sizes as we, as we want without having to upload multi multiple images. So, and that's one. Then we have the central part, and each, uh, each line you see is a different element in Zoo. So what the client sees in the back end is just a list of label, field, label, field, label, field, and they just have to fill in the information, no style at all. So they, we, we don't uh, have to say, beware that you have to press enter, keep the spaces, um, the bold character, the heading has to be red or whatever. We manage the styling and the client just input the text. So there's no risk of uh, screwing up the layouts or bad content because the client is not a designer or copies, copy paste from Word and the layouts go bad. Just normal text fields and no risk at all. This is managed by the client, by the way, so we don't touch any of the new wine they release. They just enter it. We never touch it. This here at the bottom is the winery that produces the wine. The cool thing about this is that they don't actually have to enter all the information you see there, so name, address, phone, website, for each of the wines. They just enter it once. So they create a new type called winery, and they put all the information once, name, all the address, and so on, and they can link between the wine and the winery with a select field. So they see the list of all the available wineries, they link it, and then I can say that on the wine page, I can render the item linked in a particular way, pulling in the, the information they had, that I had uh, created before. So that's a huge time server, and for example, if now that this particular winery has to change the, the phone number, I don't have to go into 200 wines and change the phone number in each wine because I just have one winery. I change the number there and each wine will have the number changed with one change. So same thing goes for the right place. It's the same item I'm, I'm displaying he here. So this is the winery. The same thing I'm displaying on the top left. So it's the same item I'm using, displaying in two different places. Here I'm displaying the name, the address, the zip code, 
uh, the fax, the f telephone number, email, and there I'm just displaying the title and the image from the winery. Uh, and I don't actually have to link twice the winery and the wine. I just link it once and display it twice. So it's, it's a very powerful tool. You don't have to do a lot of things. You just set it up once and then you can go up to the speed and insert content very, very quickly. Last couple of things on this page. Well, this is the, uh, the winery page. So when you click on Castello d'Albola that you see before, you get to this page, which is the producer of the wine. And since I linked the wine to the winery, I can also say the winery is related to the wine. So I can list all the wines that this particular estate or producer has in his listings without having to re-link everything. So when I create a new wine, I can say, OK, this wine is produced by this estate in California, for example. And when I go to the estate page, I automatically have all the wines listed there without having to edit the wine winery page and relink the wines to the winery. That's a very cool feature and a huge time saver. The part on the top, it's one of our elements at Zoolanders. Uh, it's an image pro, it's an expanded version on the basic element of Zoo called image. Uh, what it allows you to do is to uh, upload multiple images at once directly into an edit screen. And you can display those images uh, using whichever uh, widget kit layout you prefer. So you can display uh, a gallery, a slideshow, a slide set, um, a list of images, or whatever you think. If you have user widget, ever used widget kit, uh, okay, perfect. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. So each example you have on the widget kit page, uh, you can use it directly inside Zoo. So it's very easy because the user just selects a bunch of images from his computer and they automatically get displayed in a page using a slideshow or whatever. And automatically resize on the fly. So you don't have to upload the resized image or whatever. It's automatically managed by Zoom. OK, let's keep it. OK, if you remember the, the first thing I said about the small image on the top in the teaser item view, I was actually speaking about that one. So what I had there is, was not an image in each wine, so I didn't have to upload that image for each wine I had to display it on the top of the bottle. I just had to link the winery to the wine, and then I could display this image onto the wine because they are linked. So that even there, if I had to change the logo or whatever, just change it once, and all the wines have the new image uploaded automatically. It's a huge time saver on this kind of thing. And as I said per here, this is actually, I don't, see, I don't know if you see it, these two buttons here. This is actually a slideshow. So I can show all the wines inside a slideshow. And they get automatically to, uh, to change and swipe and whatever with each widget kit effect. OK, I'll skip the last one. Is OK, so just to summarize the structure, we have the wine, the winery, and the winemaker. The last part is not as important, but gives you an idea. So the wine is actually related to the winery and vice versa. So I just have <coughs> to link the two different uh, content types, and I can select them and display any information of one type into the other. Same thing goes here. OK. So now you want to, I, want, I want to show you how this really works. So I just open up a new Zoo installation and show how this works uh, in the browser. So I just load up a website and, and show you how it works. So let's just bring Chrome up. Let's see if that works.
They should use me and no worse. Okay. So uh, I'll try to use the two, the, the three point zero version. Okay. It's Zoo is both two point five and three point zero compatible. Um, I just thought that since 3.0 is the newest version. I'll just show off doing the new environment. So this is a clean installation taken from, it's the demo installation of Zoo. You can download it for free on the Utheme website. Uh, it's just pre-populated with demo content. So you can see, actually see how that works. So if my Mac wants to collaborate, actually not. all stuck. Okay, someone calls Apple, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the problem is that the UI doesn't work, so I would like to force it to quit. Yeah, but I know. Yeah. Give it some wine. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Let's hope something happens oh final no yeah restart but the problem no that's okay it's fine it's okay no oh. <laughs> yeah I, I click on the item and it worked. Okay. This is going to take a bit. So any any question in the meantime that my Apple computer goes on? <laughs> yeah. Uh, free ver uh, the pro version should be 99, correct? Okay, 99 for one year subscription, um, and that's it. But uh, I don't know if it's bad business for, for, for you theme on this, but I usually suggest to start with a free version because the pro version, uh, it's great for, for demo purposes. You know, if you like to show off a product catalog, it's great because just install the app from the pro version and it's already pre-populated, styled, CSS, images, all perfect for the product catalog or, or the cookbook uh, recites or uh, movie database. It's already styled, so it's good looking. But if you want to do your custom uh, website, so if the, the app you want to build is not actually exactly the same of the pro version one, then the work you have to do on the pro or the free version is the same. If you have the pro version, you get support faster. So. Maybe that's a pro. Yeah? Yep. Uh, the, the image gets resized not, not when you, uh, not each time you see the image, but only once. So the first time you see the image, it gets resized to the, to the dimension you desire. And from that time on, is the smaller version that uh, is loaded every time, so no performance issue on that side. Yeah. No, no, no. It's loading the small image. It, it's uh, server side resize, not 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 client side resize. Yeah, yeah. I forgot to to specify that. Thank you. Okay, let's close off a bit. Yeah. Leave it. Is a like alpha version of the 2.5 version. Is that 
I'm sorry? Quick to back. Ah, quick start, yeah. Uh, but we feel like, you know, we are, it's like integrating, so it's not native, so you are just, when you save an item in Zoo, you save the progress between the catalog and vice versa, so when you buy one, you are actually under the hood uh, purchasing a real Tienda or open cart or virtual product, so it's not that, yeah, that, 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 that good. So we are developing a native zoo commerce solution. So you can actually sell each of your zoo items from zoo. Uh, it's nearly ready. Uh, for nearly ready, I mean we are launching it live on a client site uh, by the end of November. So a couple of weeks. Uh, the issue with that is that uh, it's ready, works, but it's not uh, user friendly uh, on the back end. Yeah, because uh, it requires a lot of configuration, so we are working on making it easy to customize and configure for, for a normal uh, power user of Zoom. Because actually now it, it doesn't have, uh, you know, the work through or the tool tips or the explanation of what you need to do before launching the zoo card site and whatever. So and it's nearly ready. Yeah, it's no, no, it, it's already, it's built in a way that you just install a plugin and you can just drop in a new element inside your zoo installation and you can start selling your existing Same application. Your thing, but no, like maybe they already have sites with different uh, yeah, that's, like uh, for now, we don't, do not plan to uh, be compatible with that, but the import tool you have on Zoo is quite good. So if, if your e-commerce site can export your products, you can... Yeah, I know. If you want to do that, uh, I suggest integrating the e-commerce into Zoo, your actual e-commerce, but uh, it's kind of going the opposite way. So you're moving an e-commerce site already into a catalog site. Uh, I usually do the opposite. So usually the people go from catalog and then add e-commerce because that's easy, you know. Uh, they, they don't, uh, they are not comfortable with e-commerce or they don't have the budget or whatever. They start with the catalog and after a couple of years or a couple of months, they decide to sell the catalog they ha already have. And what you usually do is, I'm sorry, you have to build another component or switch off or you know, reinsert all the product because your catalog doesn't sell. And we wanted to catch that kind of situations. Uh, so um, what Zucart tries to do is fill in that gap. So let you sell what, what, what you already have as a catalog, not, and not replace a full-blown e-commerce like Ikashop as start. But maybe later it could be a good idea. But, you know, e-commerce are very complex things. Very complex. I was in the Tienda core team like two years ago. And I guarantee that e-commerce are really, really scary things. Uh, so for what we want to do now is just cover the basics. So let you sell cart and whatever, no stock house, no warehouse management, no invoice management, nothing fancy, just sell. And that's what you want to cover for now. But yeah, we, that's the, the initial step then. We will grow maybe one step at a time. And let's hope that, oh, I should have my, no. Yeah, but you should have the, the the DNS set up. Well, doesn't matter. Typing with the one hand is really hard. Okay. So let's go to the back end. No, not collaborating. Another question? Uh, yeah, that's part of the submission package. Um, I do that. Uh, let's say that's not really canonical. You know, it's not what it's built for, but it can work. Uh, what you do is, the, is 
you do a front end edit on a contact or uh, I don't know request type uh, in which you fill in I don't know first name subject and whatever and you do front end edit on that when they s when they s click save you get a new zoo item on the back end and you get an email notification of the new uh, submission I don't think you get a preview of that in the email I, you just get new submission and a link to the submission in the back end but it can work and the beauty of it is that's more easily stylable and uh, it, it's a very good form, form builder so you can do quite a bit of advanced thing on that so I use it on some client side so um, tell me I have the latest version of zoo yeah <laughs> that's not always the case um, okay so this is the, the demo version uh, you have all the pro applications installed and pre-populated with demo data so you can just start and browse what, what happens I know that the resolution is not great so no okay so first thing first uh, when you click on this icon here for those who don't don't know how Zoo works you have the configuration of your application and you can decide how um, how a type works, the fields, uh, what are you displaying, where. So for example, for a uh, product catalog application, we have several types, I know, automobile, book, camera, cell phone, et <coughs> etc., etc. And for example, if you go for <coughs> automobile, you click edit elements, and you will see on the left <coughs> here um, all the kind of fields already uh, populated so each automobile has a teaser description a description an image a gallery a production top speed or whatever and each one has a different type as you can see here and you can either use drop the drag and drop to reorder you can delete elements you can insert a new element for example I want uh, I don't know a new tax element it can be I don't know price and you can insert a help for your uh, user that's inserting the content so you can describe what's actually that field you can set a, a access level so you can even give different access to this to the back end or the front end and let some type of user insert just a piece of that type and the full administrator can see the entire type or you can use that for the contact form or the request form to fill out different fields. For example, we had a, um, I don't know, a, a meeting like, and there was two, two groups of people, like the hostess and the normal uh, guy who entered uh, the meeting. And the normal guy had to enter name, surname, email, uh, and all his contacts, while the, the person that was managing it could just drop in an email and uh, in a contact form and that's it to make the thing faster you know because it's a, a trusted user can input less information and we built uh, that using the front-end submission on Zoom so as you can see it's very easy to add new fields delete fields and there are a lot a lot of different types for each field here and on the bottom here, I just installed four of our extra elements from Zoolanders. Uh, I'll show you, you just one of them, just to show you what they can do. If you have Image Pro, which is an extended version of the basic image uh, on Zoo, you can set a lot of uh, extra options, so other than the name, so image. You can set, for example, if you can insert more than one image on the same field, so you can place one image, two images, three images, whatever. If you can select just files, folders, so you can select an entire folder that will fetch all the sub uh, files in that folder with one click. You can so choose both files and folders, so a folder plus a file in another, another subfolder. Uh, the default source where you are browsing, so images or media or whatever. The extension allowed, uh, 
the bigger, the, the maximum upload size of the photo to avoid, you know, TIFF images of 55 megabytes uh, that some users tend to upload um, happen. I can guarantee that. Um, if you want to show extra options like the spotlight um, feature of Widget Kit, I don't know if you know that one. You know, you over the image and you get either a uh, drop down or a fade effect on the image and so on. And the coolest thing about it is that the UI, when you insert that, I don't remember what was that automobile. So for example, I create a new automobile um, item in my application. So automobile, as you can see, the, um, the form edit is quite straightforward. So a user, even if it's not a very skilled user, uh, can insert content quite quickly without having to know about editors. Uh, you could even not load an editor on a text area and just give them plain text fields, uh, avoiding you know the alignment issues, bold issues, typography issues, color issues, the big red underlined text, bold, whatever. Uh, you just style as a CSS from a template and let the user insert pure content, text and text and text. And to show off what Image Pro can do here, uh, it's just a click and you see an agent based loader. This is the images folder by default. You can delete files, you can uh, open a subfolder, check that. Uh, you can get a preview here of the image you select. You can move this thing around. Gives you a preview of the image, the size. Uh, you can go on. You can upload new images. Uh, this is using HTML5, so you can just drag and drop in files from a folder from the desktop. So you choose your favorite folder, drag in, and it will add automatically all the files here and it does multiple upload as a queue. So you just have to, I don't know if you have all your Wines images, you just drag and drop the entire Wine folder in, it will upload 50, 500, whatever images you have in one time. And then after that, it's just a matter of selecting the image instead of re-uploading. And you can select, if I don't remember, I didn't actually enable the folder options, so I can select only files. But I ca if I select the folder option in the configuration, I can select the entire folder and list all the images on that folder. And you can also change the, uh, the title of the image, so the alt tag. Uh, you can add a light box to it, so when you click on the image, you can see another image or the same image on your choice. So here I have the same field, and I can select another image as the large one. Uh, I can add a spotlight effect. I don't know a uh, bottom caption and write a text caption here, and it will be uh, it will allow you to set I per item a different caption for the image, and that's it. For the front end, so you can see how this looks like. Uh, how much time do I have? I lost track of time. Ten minutes. Five ten. So five minutes. Okay. Is okay. Perfect. So JVC here. The resolution is a bit small, so you will see. It's not a good day for my for my PC. Can I ask you a question on that? Yeah, sure. What on that business edition site where yeah. it, how do you specifically how do I order you number one? Okay, that's not possible because their uh, policy doesn't allow that. Um, it's a strange market, the wine one. 
they have a fixed number of distributors in the UK. So they doesn't allow the, the, the business owner to go to the website and click, I want this. So they wa do, do not want that. They just want to attract contact clients. You know, I call you and they say, I want to be your distributor. And then they have a meeting and they set up whatever. It's yeah, it's a showcase website. And the fun thing is that the Zonin US uh, company, which is in California here, uh, had a Joomla website and when the UK website uh, came out, all the traffic from the USA site went to the UK one because the site was better on the UK. So the, all the US customer were going to see the wines on the UK site. So the US company called us in the office and they, and they asked us, can we have a copy of your website? Because you know, no customer is going to, to see the US website anymore. And so we are cloning the website for the US. That's quite satisfactory, you know. So one piece of one website. Again, uh, for both US yeah, <laughs> again, uh, they are different companies. You know, it's like a group. Uh, and the, each group has its own decision maker and its own CEO. <coughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, Company-related decisions. Yeah, uh, I, we told them, we explained them. It's easier to have one website. Blah 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 blah. There are even harder things, you know. Um, for example, in the UK, they have only just some kind of brands of wines, and the USA have more or less. So they didn't want to be there and see this is shown only to UK customers, and this is shown only to USA. So. It's a really strange market. So we, we say, okay, we understood, do whatever you want. We, we already did what we should have. Yeah, uh, you want to have an option for that in the English We suggested that, but you know, clients. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think half of you already had this kind of experience with strange clients. This is one of them. Um, but yeah, they have their motives. You know, they know their uh, their um, business better than than us. So if they say that for their type of customers that's better, then we trust them, and we give support where we can. So we will create a new website for the U.S. that's exactly the same with a different graphic on them, uh, but the product is the same. The, the 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 core functionality is the same. Filtering is the same. And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here is the standard product application you get from the demo website. So as you can see, it's already styled. And the fun thing is that uh, if you have a warp template installed on your website, uh, Zoo automatically styles based on the warp uh, template you have on the website. So it doesn't look as we were uh, hearing in the keynote of uh, of Kyle, the different page that look each component has its own look and feel and whatever. Here, each template integrates with Zoo smoothly, so you can uh, you see that Zoo looks like exactly like the template. And if you install a new template, the style will change with the template. So you don't. If you have a simple website, you don't actually need to do a lot of custom styling. It's nearly everything already taken care of. Obviously, if you are in a corporate or enterprise business, then that's different. You need to create a dedicated template and then style also Zoo on that. But that's way easier than style both the template and Zoo. You just style once and everything gets inherited accordingly. So does anyone has questions anymore? Stefan? <laughs> On the 2.5 2. version? Yes. Okay. Right. Wooden and plain. Um, so the hardest thing that I had was, you know, the admin elements version is pretty good. Mm -hmm. The enterprise version is pretty good. It's figuring out how to make it lay on the page the way I want it. Is okay. that, you're saying that that's something that you could just. Okay. Um, this is a, uh, is a good question. Uh, it takes like. 15 minutes to, to answer to. <laughs> so anyone interested in, yeah, the, yeah. 
any designer that wants to know how to style a page in Zoo, so how to place things on the top right, on the top left, or whatever, come to me after the session. I'll always show you in, with the code. Uh, basically, it's just as with a template in Joomla, you have a template file, and you just create your HTML as you would like to, it to be, and then you just drag and drop from the administrator inside that box you create. For example, uh, it, it's very similar to module positions. Mm -hmm. So if you know how to create a module position in a template, the concept is exactly the same. So you create an empty HTML page. You say, here I want a position, and here I want a position. And then in the administrator interface, you drag and drop in these empty boxes your elements, and it gets automatically styled, position, and whatever. So a designer can re I have a designer. Uh, which is not a programmer, so it d she doesn't know PHP at all, and she can build a, Zonin was built 95% by her with no PHP code, just HTML and CSS. So the documentation on your site on how to do that? Yeah, there is uh, the basics. Then if you want to do huge modifications, uh, you have to go step by step. The basics are there, but John is going to make that better, right? Yeah. <laughs> now that's the documentation for new mo new template, new layout, new position, a new uh, other new position and a new style. It's all there, with code examples and l um, screenshots. Okay, but if you theme documentation website, uh, uh, let's see if I can go there. Uh, it's the same since 2.2, okay, I oh, think. It hasn't uh, the, the style is the same, maybe, maybe some code name or, or class name, but. Are the class names going to be changed for Bootstrap? Uh, no, uh, Uthin doesn't use Bootstrap, but the, the, uh, the code style is nearly the same, I would say. I mean, uh, it's all based on classes. So, no huge CSS file. No inline styling, so you, I don't know. For example, Bootstrap has pull left and pull right for, for aligning things. Utheme has float left and float right. Exactly the same thing. Um, I don't know, you have the H1, which is styled automatically, the H3 styled automatically. So you get into, if you, if you use a warp template, uh, the concept is the same. Uh, should be do. Mm, documentation. So what you are searching for is uh, create a new template, uh, create a new layout with positions, for example. This is a template, like create a new uh, template file. So path, uh, what to edit, code example. And more examples. So it's pretty deep documentation. And the best way I learned uh, was to just open uh, a demo zoo application, like a product catalog application, browse through it. It's very clear. And it's commented. So it's very, y you go with this one, with this page, and the demo application. I think in 30 minutes, you get how, how, it, how, how it works without too many issues. OK, so if any designer needs something like that, please come, because I can show you the real code, and that's way easier than talking and showing you in documentation. Questions? OK. Uh, 